Alone at the edge of a universe humming a tune Or merely dreaming we were so A siren sounds like the goddess who promises endless apologies of paradise. And only she can make it right. So things are different to Together in flight. Hello everyone. It's been a while since I've been set here for this type of video. I just want to give a quick overview of how I created the look for the shot using only the Dehancer plugin for DaVinci Resolve. This whole video really came about while I was scrolling my comment section and I saw a comment from Dehancer asking if I wanted to do a collab with him. And since my whole look recently has been all about like this nostalgic warm look and I value the certain aspects of the film look that actually contribute to what I'm going for, the emotions that I'm going for, the grain, the halation, the bloom, the image that I have in my head when I think of each frame that I'm going for in this like very short films that I make. Full disclosure, this is in collaboration with Dehancer and they have given me a full license as well as an affiliate code that you can use to get 10% off if you watch this video and decide that you are going to want to buy this plugin as well as I'll get also 10% commission off your purchase if you use the code GOLDENFRAME23 and uh, as a broke film student, I thank you if you decide to use my code. Even though this is a collab, they have encouraged complete transparency and of course I will be talking about things that I like and things that I don't like about this plugin. Okay, so as you can see, we only have the one node here. I'm going to take my Dehancer plugin, just put it on the node. And first things first, you're going to see a very ugly green wash or bluish green wash. To fix that, all you need to do is go to input and you basically need to explain to the plugin how it looks at your footage. So I'm just going to choose camera. I'm going to select the vendor, which is basically the company that made the camera. So I'm going to choose Sony. And then I'm going to choose my camera, mine is the a7 III and I'm going to choose the profile I shot in a flat log profile, um, S-Log2, so I'm just going to click that and immediately we have this nice look. Over here we have the basic corrections, so you can change the exposure, you can change the temperature and the tint, I'm not going to touch on these two, it's not really important. I'm going to close this down. One issue you might have with this plugin is if you scroll down, you can see all the settings are open, which could be a bit confusing. So what I found is if you hold Option or Alt on uh, PC and you click on any of the settings, it closes all of them. So you have a bit more, you, you can concentrate a bit more one by one. So now we're going to go to Film Developer. And also another thing, you're most likely going to have to enable most of these settings manually. So I'm just going to enable this. And I'm just going to boost the color a bit. As you can see, it gives quite a nice look because I am going for that bright, colorful, nostalgic film look. Uh, I'm going to leave the rest here. And now I'm going to go to the film. This is where you choose the film stock that you are going to emulate. I'm going to stick to 250D, but there are like 63 other ones. So it's a bit overwhelming, but you can just play around with them. They are all quite good. I just decided I'm going to stick with 250D because I really like the look that I'm getting already. Okay, so film compression. The effect that film compression normally does in a realistic setting is it compresses or it flattens the highlights. So if you can see here, just look, keep an eye out on this bright sky here. You can see it flattens it out and also this bright part of the wall. It kind of makes it like a creamy, flat look. I don't like that. I like it. Like I said, I'm going for a poppy look. So I'm going to leave this disabled. Expand is basically where, say you applied a film look and it crushed your black, so it made it very contrasty. You can basically expand your shadows or bring it down. Same with a white point, you could basically make it brighter or bring down the highlights a bit more. So I'm gonna make it pop a bit more, make it a bit brighter. Keeping an eye out on obviously this bright section here with the water. 
zoom out i really really like this look it's already giving me that summer kind of nostalgic look i'm still missing a couple of aspects like i want it to be nice and soft and ethereal as well and i also want to boost the tonal contrast a bit i will talk a bit more of tonal contrast when i get to it so i'm just going to bring this down i'm going to go to print as I mentioned before, Deonza actually really puts emphasis on following an accurate film process. So all of these could be attributed to actual processes in developing film. So when it comes to print, the differences between film stocks and print stocks is film stocks basically shape the raw material and print stocks define the finished product's appearance. So here is where you have tonal contrast. This I really like. The reason I really like tonal contrast over normal contrast is because normal contrast adjusts overall brightness and makes it basically makes the bright areas brighter and the dark areas darker and that can lead to clipping and with tonal contrast, tonal contrast focuses on the variation in the different color tones and shades. It emphasizes the differences between the adjacent color tones and this basically brings out finer details in the mid-tones and creates an overall three-dimensional look to your footage. So I really, really was pleasantly surprised when I came up on this slider because I wasn't really privy to this. So as you can see when I push this up, obviously it does crush the, the, the shadows a bit, but it also really enriches the overall tones of your footage as you can see it really you, you obviously you obviously don't want to go overboard but i really like how it makes the colors look i don't know if you can see this on youtube but i really really like tonal contrast i think i pushed the blacks a bit too much i'm just gonna there we go i'm gonna leave print for now i'm gonna go to color head color head is basically color correction uh, let me just enable it to show you you can you can add a cold or warm look to the shadows and basically on each and every one of these you can edit a cold or a warm look and here is basically where you so you can see here I get some magenta you can get some green I'm not gonna really use this since I'm already quite happy with what the film stock is doing for me so I'm just gonna close this down and now we go to film grain okay now with film grain is where I really started seeing the full benefits of Dehancer you obviously have the normal basic uh, setting with the amount and obviously you have your profiles here 8 millimeter 16 millimeter the lower number you got obviously the bigger the more intense the grain is going to be but where this plugin actually shines is if you go to custom you have all these settings you can play with and the real setting that I want to talk about is film resolution a lot of the times when I'm trying to get that film nostalgic soft look I find my footage to be a bit too sharp and if I simply make a new node here and I drop the sharpness kind of feels a bit too digital and a bit too fake I really don't like how let me just zoom in to show you when I erase detail to make it look a bit softer it overall doesn't it looks a bit too it doesn't look very natural the blur that I'm adding the the loss of detail that I'm adding and this is where film resolution comes in film resolution basically uses the noise as far as I can tell it uses the noise to organically erase detail because obviously the amount of noise and the way the noise is shaped determines the actual detail you have in your footage for example if I make the noise bigger you kind of lose some of that detail I don't know if YouTube is allowing you to see this but uh, the lines here just uh, keep an eye on the lines let me just make the size of the grain finer you can see you have way more detail in these lines but now let me show you why I actually love this film resolution option if you lower the resolution you can see you can see the noise shifting to get rid of detail now you can no longer see the lines so if I added more you can see it is more detail now but if I let me just zoom out to show you it looks way more organic than just erasing detail with the sharpness over here or with a blur or with a blur plugin in the corner with like a, maybe a lens blur plugin it doesn't feel as organic and natural as using the noise to get rid of detail it, I really love this uh, setting here DaVinci Resolve does have quite a good noise plugin. But to be honest, when I tried both of them together, they kind of looked the same to me. But when it came to this setting, I couldn't find anything like this for the normal DaVinci Resolve plugin. I really love that they offered something like this. I'm going to make it a bit softer because, like I said, I'm going for a nostalgic, ethereal look. And I really like the way this is going. Now, all we need to do is go down and add halation and bloom. As you can see on the profile, we are now 35 millimeter, but the, the lower the millimeter, the more intense the effect is and you can also just lower it I'm gonna keep it on 35 I also really like the answers relation over DaVinci Resolves because DaVinci Resolves feels a bit too global the effects uh, and it really kind of affects 
the whole image quite haphazardly whereas i think dehance's halation feels more it feels quite precise i just overall prefer the halation of dehance over davinci resolves the same can be said with bloom i really really love the bloom effect on dehance Obviously, DaVinci Resolve does have a glow effect, and I was able to kind of replicate the bloom effect of Dehancer through two DaVinci Resolve glow effects. I was I had to duplicate the glow effect and kind of add a bit more, a bit more of a spread uh, to kind of duplicate what this was doing. So this basically saves time, and I also wasn't able to 100% uh, replicate the ethereal, soft, nice look that this bloom gives. I don't really know how to put it, but I really, really love the bloom effect that Dehancer gives. Let me just show you before and after. I really, <laughs> immediately, I really love the dreamy atmosphere I'm getting with this bloom effect. So I'm gonna keep it like this. And now we go to film damage. Film damage is basically the scratches that would compile over the actual film uh, as it was an actual physical thing that people would touch. And as the film was going through the projector, you would just see the flashes of scratches and different pieces of damage on the film. So I'm gonna enable this. Like I said, the lower the millimeter, the more evident and the more extreme the effects are. So I'm gonna go to eight millimeter because I really wanna see the damage. You can, I don't know if, you can, if YouTube is allowing you to see, you see some things like this, like the small scratches. And obviously um, you also have the amount slider. Foam breathe, I really don't like because it shifts the tones. I don't know if you can see, let me, let me zoom into the wall so you can see. Um, it shifts the color tones of, it's very subtle, but I really don't like it. It, sh it basically uh, it shifts the tones of your image and I don't like that. So I'm gonna put this off, close this. Gate weave is in real life when the film isn't properly fastened to the sprockets on the in the projector. It kind of shifts, shifts from side to side. So if I enable this and I make it really extreme by making it eight millimeter, let me zoom in so you can see. You can see it shifts. I'm not gonna have this, so I'm gonna take that off. Overscan is also a very, very useful tool. This is, you know, in this trendy social media where they show the overlays, the gate of the actual film in the, in the footage. It immediately adds a special feel to your video. Let me just enable it here. And as you can see, this is a, one, a different version, but uh, I really like the eight millimeter. This is the one that most people use. Um, and you can see it also it's also pre-animated i really like this and for this specific video i decided not to use it however i did really like the realistic um, edge way on the gate this would be really hard to get uh, if you're using normal masking and stuff so i really appreciated this so what i did was i just went to the normal 35 and then i cropped the sides of the image out because i really wanted this um this gate still because it felt more natural with as you can see here, the bumpy edge way that's quite realistic. The overscan option in the plugin is quite a time saver, especially because you, otherwise you're gonna have to score the internet looking for overlays that work. And these are really high quality. If I were to uncheck static gate, this is basically to keep the gate still. Uh, when in reality, if you really want an accurate look, it is gonna bounce around a bit. So I'm gonna uncheck this so you can see. As you can see here, uh, the, the gate also is animated. So I didn't like that, so I'm gonna make it static and vignette. Vignette is the same like any other vignette uh, although I didn't really uh, want a vignette because like I said I'm going for a bright poppy look and it didn't really fit with the feel that I was going for so I'm gonna leave that. Monitor is quite useful you can monitor whether your footage is clipping or anything. Here's the clipping indication you can kind of see where the blacks are clipping and the highlights are clipping. Output is basically the overall impact that the plugin effects have so if you don't really want a hundred percent of what you did in the plugin to be showing you can actually just lower the strength and LUT generator you can basically take all the effects you added and make it into a LUT that you can apply to any other footage which is very useful and very time saving and options is basically when you control the quality obviously normal quality is going to lead to your plugin uh, being faster or your computer being faster and a high is maybe you have a very expensive pc or a very good editing pc and you want the whole plugin to run on high and so far on normal and fast i haven't really ran into any lag or any crashes okay so the last step is basically for me to go to the editing section i went to effects added an adjustment clip let me just add it over the footage and then i went to crop and i cropped the sides ah that's a bit too much there we go Okay, finally, overall pros and cons. 
when it comes to cons the answer is very expensive at around 499 dollars for a lifetime license there are other cheaper payment options for this plugin but it's still quite expensive and on top of that certain effects in Dehancer are available in DaVinci Resolve Studio and DaVinci Resolve Studio is about $295 I think which is way cheaper than Dehancer. When it comes to the pros of this plugin Dehancer is quite a quick and convenient way of getting that nostalgic film look and it also has quite a lot of control so if you do want to spend the time and massage the look of your footage there is that option to you with the various settings that it has. The amount of areas you have at your disposal regarding the film look like with all the different settings is actually amazing my favorite being the ability to organically change your film's resolution using film grain which I think is amazing I'll never like get over that setting I feel like it really elevates the quality of that film emulation that you're getting if you want those valuable assets that the answer can give you as well as the convenience of having it right there and also if you be very really new to the color grading and those kind of advanced effects are a bit too out of your reach the answer I think is quite a convenient way of getting to those looks quite quick like for example I got to this look that you see here in five minutes without really even looking at the documentation they gave me and the, the, the answer is just a very convenient and very high quality plugin and I think overall it is worth its money if you can afford it and again if you use the code goldenframe23 you can get 10% off and you'll be supporting me by giving me a 10% commission of your purchase. Okay enough rambling on about videos and, uh, and Dehancer and film looks and all this stuff go make something cool and I guess I'll see you next time. Thank you.